Okay, now, just in the same way that we solved for present value and future value, it is very straightforward to solve for the rate, the IY, or the, the, the I in the formula, or the N, the number of periods. And particularly on the calculator, this is uh, absolutely no harder than, any, than present value or future value. We are just entering in the three values that we know and computing the one unknown. Now, if you wanted to try and use the formula, you still can here in this case, uh, it is a little, it is considerably more complex, uh, the formula, uh, to rearrange the formula. Uh, and so I, I'm not going to show you. If you're interested, you can, you can follow up with me, and, and I'm happy to show you uh, and, and talk about how to solve these analytically. But the, for most of us, uh, the calculator is a much, much easier way to do this. Uh, and there is, uh, again, no difference in, in difficulty here. Uh, what, ha what, what we need to stay, sort of stay in mind is that if we had a list of 10 of these problems in a row, the most important thing is that we are identifying the correct thing to solve for. Now with rate and n, the number of periods, it's usually pretty clear because the problem is gonna have to ask something very straightforward like what rate do you need to earn or how long do you need to be in the investment account? So uh, we'll start by solving for a couple of examples where we're looking for the rate. So for instance, Let's say we start with $1,000 today and we need $10,000 35 years from now. What rate do I need to earn in some imaginary investment account in order to get from $1,000 to $10,000 in 35 years? Right. So uh, it's pretty clear here that we're solving for rate. We want to know IY. Uh, what we're going to start with, if I have, I have a present value of a thousand, and I'm going to invest that money into some investment account. That's my outflow. I'm going to leave it in that investment account for 35 years, and I'm going to hope that whatever I chose is enough to 10 times my money, right? To give me $10,000 in. Uh, in future value at the end of this investment. And what I'm going to do is compute my IY. So we come over here to the calculator. We second future value to clear the time value of money function. We enter in the present value. This is the cash outflow that we are going to invest in some account. So a thousand, make it negative. That's our present value. We're going to leave it in the account for 35 years, so 35 and then in. And at the end, we're going to hope there's $10,000 there, so 10,000 and future value. What we're going to solve for is the IY. What's the rate that we're, we're going to need to earn to make this happen? And we can see that that is 6.8. And one of the important things here is that the rate, the, uh, the period of your output, if you're solving for IY or N, the period of your output is gonna agree with the periods of your input. So if your inputs are in years, your output is also per year. If my input was in months, my output would also be in months, okay? So that's really important, particularly if you're making conversions back and forth, you gotta keep that in mind, right? So I'd need to make 6.8% a year to multiply my money by 10 over a period of 35 years. Second, a firm must buy a warehouse in 25 years for one and a half million dollars. The firm is gonna sell its last asset today for 965,000. What rate of return does it need to earn to make the investment? Now, uh, first, just up front, of course, if you really think about this, this is a terrible business plan, right? No firm is going to sell everything it owns today and then wait 25 years to buy a warehouse for a business that, of course, hasn't existed for 25 years, right? And again, I'm just, I make these up off the top of my head. There's, there's no sort of nothing to learn from these problems except practice. Um, in terms of practicing the solutions. So again, we're solving for the rate. We wanna know how much we have to earn if we're gonna invest almost a million dollars and turn it into a million and a half in 25 years. We wanna solve for IY. Okay. I have my present value. I have my future value. 
and I have my n, the number of periods. My present value is the amount that I receive from selling my last asset. Now, there's sort of two ways to think about the story being told in this problem. One is that I sell an asset and then I buy one. So I sell something for and I, and I have a cash inflow and then I buy something and I have a cash outflow. The second way to think about it is uh, that I, I sell an asset and that, uh, or that I invest the sales proceeds and then I recoup the sales proceeds in order to buy the asset. Right? So there's sort of an interior something happening and an exterior something happening. I sell the asset, I use the money to make an investment. So that's an, uh, an inflow, then an outflow. And then I recoup the investment. So I close the investment account, that's an inflow. And then I use the proceeds to buy the warehouse, that's an outflow. As long as you tell, as long as you are consistent with your inflow and outflow, right? Then uh, it doesn't matter which one you use. So I will, I'll use the uh, investment account here. Uh, so I'm going to invest 965,000 that I get from selling my last asset. And then I will receive from the closing of the investment account 25 years from now, I'll receive $1.5 million. Right? And I will leave it in the account for 25 years and compute my rate that I have to earn for this to happen. So I will clear my time value money. I'll clear out that face. Uh, I have a $965,000 investment. This is a cash outflow because I am making the investment. That's my present value. Once I close the account in 25 years, I'll have $1.5 million that I can then subsequently spend. But when closing the account, that's a cash inflow. That's money coming back to me, uh, even if it's only temporarily. And I'm gonna have it in the account for 25 years. So that's 25 and in. I compute my IY and I get 1.78. Now remember, this is in percentage terms and it is in the same period as the period of my input. So that is 1.78% per year, right? Now notice a couple of things. Notice that uh, between these two problems, uh, something is illustrated about them. Uh, the financial world and the way finance works in general. And it's part of something that you've probably heard of before, which is that it takes money to make money. Okay. So both of these investment accounts are for about the same amount of time, pretty similar, 35 years, 25 years. Now there's a 10 year difference, but they're both a long investment horizon. But the, the amount of money that we start with is significantly different. Here we start with a thousand dollars and here I start with almost a million, right? The amount of money I want to make is also significantly different. Here I am only trying to make nine thousand dollars. Here I'm trying to make five hundred thousand. So you would think that, right? And I have a longer time to make it here than here. So you would think that on the face of it, I should be able to earn less money here. I'm trying to make less money. I have a longer time to do it. I should be able to earn a lower rate and get there. But the, the converse is true. And the reason is because the amount that I start with or the relative difference, right? Here I'm trying to multiply my money by 10 and I'm starting with quite a small amount relative to that. So I'm gonna have to earn a pretty high rate in order to make that much relative to what I started with. Whereas if I start with a million dollars and all I wanna do is multiply my money by 1.5, right? I only wanna make 50%. Here I wanna make 1,000%, here I wanna make 50. And if I start with that, I can make significantly more in absolute value uh, at a much lower rate. Right? So the, the, the takeaway here is that the more money you start with, the more money you can make. And, uh, and the less money that you start with, the longer and harder it's going to be to get there, right? This is why uh, this is why wealth stays generation over generation. Wealth uh, tends to accumulate, and the more you have, the easier it is to continue accumulating that wealth. Uh, and for those of us that are starting with none, uh, you need to put in as much money as you can for as long as you can at as high a rate as you can, in order to start to accumulate that money.